generation and previous ones who have been responsible for this catastrophe and it's important to remember that most of it has been created by developed nations and the people that are paying the biggest price are the developing nations. Yes. I'm really concerned about our Pacific Island neighbours where the increase in, in uh, sea level rises is already affecting them because A, the ocean's heating up so the storms are, are more ferocious. And then with a tiny little bit of sea level rise and the acidification of the ocean, mm -hmm. it's now uh, contaminating uh, their wells and the aquifers. So it's really becoming a problem of habitation for the Pacific Islands because the, the ground is becoming more acidic. So, of course, crops aren't growing as well. And then the water coming out of the wells is brackish. This is an incredibly big story. And no one is talking about it. And they keep going on and on about, oh, later this century. This isn't happening later this century. It's happening as we speak. It's happening now. And my understanding is, hasn't the UN, isn't there a small group of islands in the Pacific where the UN has actually declared them um, the, the first group of peoples who have been declared climate refugees? That has happened, and, and uh, a family came to New Zealand and applied for residency in New Zealand on the basis of uh, climate change refugee status. Yeah. They were initially granted it, and then Washington's man and Parnell and Simon Bridges went back and rescinded it. So I don't know exactly the details about how they were able to do that. But see, this creates a precedent. Mm. None, of the, none of the developed nations want to accept the fact oh, that yeah. there are going to be climate change refugees. Right, yep. Because that means that there are going to be millions, hundreds of millions of people migrating around the planet. 